In this video, I want to cover line trays multi. Now, we're only going to be covering line trays multi by channel because I've already covered by object type and by profile via line trace single. So it's the exact same thing across the board there. The only difference being it outputs a, an array of F hit results instead of a single F hit result. So that's going to be the only difference. If you want to know how to use these two, feel free to watch the other two videos. They're very simple. So with focusing on this, we revert back to what we had in the first video. So I'm just using a line trace single by channel using the visibility channel. So here I have one cube that's set to visibility block, but everything else is ignoring it. And with this one, where visibility is ignored, but everything else is blocking. So starting from here, I can't walk through it. I press E. Nothing happens because visibility is ignored. Here, I have no collision, but I press E. And as you can see, it is picking up my line trace. That's because we're using the visibility channel. Now, let's work convert this over to a multi. So we replace single with multi. And as you can see, it gives us an error on the hit result. So it says it needs to be a T array. So let's convert that to a T array of F hit results, which is gonna then mess with our output here. So because it is an array, we're gonna go ahead and just iterate through all of them and output which ones are hit. And I'll show you what the purpose of a line trace multi is because of this. So what we're gonna do is a for loop of a well, let's do f hit result. Let's get it by reference. Hit result and hit results. Now we have to rename this from hit result to hit results, just really quick. And that's going to allow us to do stuff. So let's go ahead and grab this log here, print it out. And I want to check and make sure the actor is valid. So if a actor, actor, equals hit result dot get actor then I want to print out the log so I'm going to rename just replace this stuff here with actor so we are printing out the actor that we're getting from the hit result that we're on in this for loop and that's all so there's going to be a slight issue with this well yes and no actually so it returns true hopefully it says so So it returns overlapping hits, and then the first blocking hit are sorted. So a blocking hit, if found, will be the last element in the array, and only the single closest blocking hits will be generated. No tests will be done after that. So let's say we have... Let me actually shrink these up a bit. Make them kind of like walls. And let me just position them around a bit better. I'm going to rename this one here to... Cube 1 or cube two, this is going to be cube one. So let's say cube two is a blocking hit and cube one here is an overlap. So this is where we're going to learn about overlap events or not overlap events. Sorry, my right mouse button is a little bit broken. Oh my gosh, this is kind of ridiculous. Really bad now. Let me fly. Oh, that works. Brute force for the win. Okay. Here we are. So let's say cube one here is set to be overlapped and cube two is set to block everything. Well, because if we, again, reread this, it's going to return the blocking hit last and all of the other overlaps are going to be before it. So it's going to be the first thing that gets printed out. It's going to be hit actor cube one. And then the second one, because it was a blocking hit, is going to be hit actor cube two because of the names up here. So if I were to just duplicate this one more time, let me actually drag these a bit closer. Like make sure my line trace goes all the way through. This one's going to be cube three. Now I'm going to set this to be a blocking one as well. So let's see kind of just what happens. Don't remember if I compile it or not. Okay. Press E cube one, and then cube two, right down here. Just as, well, duh, as I said so. So if I change cube two to overlap, we now have cube one, cube two, and cube three. So why is it going through them all now? And that's because, as you can kind of tell by the name, we set the collision channel 
or their collision response for cube two to overlap. So when you have an overlap with a line trace multi, your line will go through it, but it will still store it inside of your hit result. So pretend my cursor is a slow moving line. It comes in slowly, hits cube one. Figures out that cube one is overlapping, so it's gonna take cube one and put it in my hit results. It's gonna then continue forward, hit cube two. Cube two is set to overlap. Let's store it in the hit results. Let me duplicate uh, cube three and we'll have cube four. Let's say it continues on, goes to cube three. Cube three is blocking, so we're gonna store that in the hit results and then stop, and that's it. We're not gonna continue on and try to hit cube four because we know that cube three was already a blocking hit. So that's how line trace multi works. So this is handy if you want to do some form of penetration or something along those lines. Now you can kind of dictate your, let's do this in the terms of bullets. So let's say you have, these are all wooden panels here. Let me go to that one. And let's say, let me grab this guy out here. So we shoot through one wooden panel, two wooden panels, and then we hit our character. Well, our character's collision is going to be set to block. Just assume, let's just assume visibility is set to block. So that means we're going to go through, we're going to hit cube one, hit cube two, and then hit our character. So our character is going to be our blocking hit. What we can tell from that is, hey, we hit one actor here. Uh, we can say, hey, this physical material of this object here is wood. So we can take away, I don't know, 5% of damage, for example. Then we go through and we hit another wall here. And we can say, oh, well, we hit another wall and its physical material is wood. So let's take off another 5% of the damage. And then we make our way down to the character. We determine that, okay, this is a character, it's not, you know, it's not a wall or anything like that. So let's apply the damage that we have. Well, instead of that damage, let's say it was 100. Well, you just took off 5% of 100 plus another 5% of 100 or whatever 5% of 100 is. Wait, I did this wrong. Script. Math is not my strong suit, especially you're not right now. It's getting late. So you would have less than 100 damage being dealt to your character. So you could use that as a form of calculating damage based on penetration. And that way you could also only use one line trace with it. So the other route would be, you know, your basics of you have your line trace, you hit this side of the wall. Your blocking hit's going to be right here because you're going to have it set to blocking. Then you have to send out another line trace going this way. Or sorry, you would go out this way even farther. And then you would send a line trace straight back to try to figure out the thickness of the wall or roughly where the hit is. In which case you would then start at that hit, go just probably out a little bit, and start another line trace. So you would have three line traces to kind of dictate your penetration, that kind of stuff, calculating your values as you just keep kind of iterating through. But yeah, you know, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. But that kind of sums it up. So there's really nothing crazy or it's not confusing it's the line trace system in unreal is really very simple and allows us to kind of do just about whatever we want so anyways that's going to do it for this video if you like what i'm doing and you want to help support me you can find a link to my patreon down in the description below where we create a team death match game from the ground up using unreal engine with c plus plus a bunch of different features such as custom spawning scoreboards all that fun stuff as well as a weapon customization system if you have any questions or anything like that feel free to join my discord down below and i'll try to help you out the best i can so see you in the next video